ओके सो वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू एंड जैसा कि आप लोग सबको पता है टू मेक अवर संडे इज प्रोडक्टिव टूडे वी हैव इनवाइटेड अ वेरी स्पेशल गेस्ट एंड आई एम वेरी क्लोज टू हर सीन मोर देन फाइव इयर्स आई थिंक दैट आई एम एसोसिएटेड विथ हर एंड लाइक लेट मी टेल यू समथिंग अबाउट हर like she started her actuarial journey right after uh, class 12 boards and she has been a very consistent performer in almost all the exams and whatever she has uh, studied she has studied in depth and currently she is in accenture as a senior actuarial analyst in their uh, general insurance team she possesses vast experience in this uh, field so without wasting any more time we would like to onboard miss akshita kedia today and she would basically like to guide us on uh, what uh, are the pluses and minuses uh, that one should be careful about in uh, giving the higher exams about interviews and uh, how can you uh, basically build a strong uh, network on linkedin and all these aspects Uh, in which there is not much resources in the youtube right generally we talk more about uh, studies and paper clearing but the most important part is the interviews so yes ma'am you can uh, now the floor is all yours thank you so much praveen bhaiya and thank you for being a constant guide through all these years uh, please let me know when my screen is visible yeah you can uh, share your screen yes <clears throat> okay great you can see the powerpoint right yes okay so hi everyone uh, as praveen bhai already gave my introduction my name is akshita kheri and i'm from kolkata Uh, I have recently joined Accenture as a senior actuarial analyst in their general insurance pricing team. Uh, so I've been pursuing actuarial exams uh, from IFOI, and I'm just one paper away from becoming an associate. And in today's session, I want to talk about what exactly worked for me and didn't work for me while I was preparing for my interviews. So the agenda for today's discussion is how can we find job openings how can we get our resume shortlisted how to crack actuarial interviews how to answer the question what's your expected ctc and how to balance work and studies so you know before uh, proceeding ahead uh, i just want to give you a little background about me with respect to interviews so i graduated back in october 2020 but uh, i still have only 1.5 years of experience and i will tell you why so the reason for that is uh, i was so afraid uh, that i'll not be able to clear any interview and that the interviewer is going to reject me that i never applied for any jobs at all like in the year 2020 and even when i started applying in uh, late january 2021 uh i was not consistent at all like uh, i used to apply uh, to one job a month or i used to appear for two and inter two interviews every two months like uh, uh, it, i was not consistent at all so this basically led to the fact that uh, i was not even prepared in my interview and uh, when the interviewer used to ask me basic questions like uh, what is irr what is npv i just used to freeze uh, because i did not prepare myself and i was not up to the mark so i either used to black out in the interview or uh, i used to you know i used to give an excuse that i'm not feeling well actually not truly really an excuse i was actually not feeling well because i was not prepared and i used to just uh, sort of end the call uh, after saying goodbye to the interviewer and uh, i never really waited for the hr's call because i knew that uh, i haven't cleared my interview so you know i would just like to say that uh, the first step towards clearing any interview is that uh, you really need to let go of that fear and start believing in yourself like uh, the moment uh, you know i had that sort of mindset uh, that the worst that can happen to me is that the hr will say that i'm not selected or the fact that i'll not get a call back for that particular interview i started uh, you know 
performing much better in all my interviews so once you really let go of that fear of rejection and the fact that it is not the end of the world if you don't get that job and the fact that there are plenty of opportunities uh, available uh, you will really perform much much better in all your interviews and the last point that i like to say before proceeding further is that uh, you know don't be half in and half out while you're preparing for interviews like uh, when i started you know i was not 100% in i was not searching for jobs properly i was not uh, preparing for interviews properly so take as much time as you want to decide that you want to start uh, appearing for interviews but once you decide go all in go 100% in and uh, you know then you will actually see the difference because it is very disheartening when uh, you when you even if you appear for one interview per month it is disheartening if you don't get a call back so it is better that you actually you know don't break the flow you are 100% into it and then you'll actually see that uh, you'll actually understand where you're going wrong and uh, you'll be able to perform much better in the next interview so without further ado now i will move on to the first slide which is how to find job openings so now you know there are plenty of job openings available but uh, when we look on linkedin that uh, you know this person is starting a new job that person is starting a new job and uh, you know 50% of the times we are so surprised that uh, this company was even hiring so how to know and how to correctly apply to job openings uh, i have listed down a few points that have actually helped me in the past so number one is there are various groups on linkedin linkedin and telegram that frequently post about job openings so actual job opportunities is one such group on telegram that posts like numerous job openings on a daily basis across all levels for life insurance general insurance or pensions so basically there are a lot of hrs and third party agencies on that group that keep on posting opportunities so i mean i would actually urge you to write down the name of uh, this group because it posts you know a minimum of 10 job openings on a daily basis and then uh, there is also a group called vacancy actually on linkedin you can actually dm me on linkedin so i can get you added to that group so even on that that group there are a couple of people who keep on posting about uh, various job openings that are currently available and uh, you know there is also actuators educational institute uh, the page on linkedin that keeps on posting about job openings so you know you can sort of follow them so that uh, you can be updated about any openings uh, that are upcoming now the second point would be that uh, there is a section in linkedin you might have noticed on the extreme right hand side there is a section called jobs which basically lists out all the openings that are currently posted on linkedin so once you start applying to jobs that match your uh, job profile or your interests you know thanks to ai you are going to find out jobs uh, that are similar uh, to the ones that you have applied for and trust me this has actually helped me a lot because i have used this particular thing in the past to apply for a lot of jobs now the third point is there are a lot of uh, you know third party recruiters and agencies like green tree advisory talent wing consultants future track which are often looking for candidates that might align with a particular role so like even if you uh, don't have the contact of any one of them you can just go to linkedin you can search green tree advisory and you will find a couple of people who are working under there and you can just send them an email or a dm on linkedin and ask them uh, you know you can share your resume or you can uh, brief them uh, about your past experience and you can ask them if there is any particular opening related to uh, you know what you are looking for or you can even dm me i can share you the contact of you know few few of them and uh, then you can connect with them regarding any job openings that are currently available the fourth point is very very common so as you know uh, whenever people post uh, they use a lot of hashtags on whether it is instagram or linkedin to to basically expand their reach so you can use common hashtags on linkedin like actual job or actual opening and you will come across plenty of people who have uh, you know posted about openings at their organization or people who have uh, reshared somebody else's post uh, and then you can uh, see whether it matches uh, what you are looking for or not 
Uh, the fifth point is also something that I figured out when I was applying for jobs this time around. So you can use key searches like role company on LinkedIn and browse through the current posts that they have made. For example, if I talk about the first example, like HR PwC. So you can search HR PwC on LinkedIn at, and it will give you a couple of results of the HRs that are working at PwC. Now, there are two things that you can do after that. Uh, with If they are not one of your connections, uh, you can just browse through their current posts. So HRs generally post about uh, current openings at their organization. So you can see if they have reshared any post or if they have made a post about a current opening at their organization that you would like to apply for. And you know, you'll generally find their email ID or a link to apply to. Or the second thing that you can do is you can find their email ID or you can send them a connection request. You can, uh, you know, mention a small brief in three to four sentences like, uh, hi, my name is this, this, and, you know, I have this much years of experience or I'm a fresher and I'm currently looking to apply or change uh, to this background. And uh, it'll be great if you have any opening that, uh, you know, you can uh, consider me for and you can just share your resume. Uh, there is a high chance that they won't accept your connection request or they won't reply, but uh, I think it is always good to give it a try rather than sitting idle. Uh, the next point would be uh, to make a list of companies that you want to apply to and keep searching their job portal for updates. So again, you're there, you will find two options. LinkedIn also gives you an option where you can just search the name of the company and then you can go to the job section and you can see if there are any openings that match your interest. Or you can also go to the official website of that company and on their careers or job portal, you can just search uh, if they have any current openings in your preferred location or your preferred job profile. And, uh, you know, you can apply to that. Uh, the next point would be that uh, cold emailing to HRs can be very helpful. So I will talk about a personal example uh, that helped me in the past. So, you know, uh, while I was uh, browsing through LinkedIn, I came across the name of an HR from PwC, but I saw uh, that, you know, she uh, did not make any post uh, on LinkedIn about an opening. But since I had a friend who was working at PwC, I knew that there was an opening available. Uh, but I just didn't know how to apply for it. So I just, uh, you know, sort of got their email ID and I just emailed her saying that, uh, hi, my name is Akshita Keria and I've been working in the general insurance domain for about 1.5 years. And uh, currently I'm looking to make a switch. So uh, it would be great uh, if you could let me know that if you have an opening that matches my profile and I'm attaching my resume for your reference. And, you know, the next day I actually got a call from the HR saying that they have an opening and my resume is shortlisted and they would like to take further details. So, uh, you know, there is a chance that the HR will not reply because they receive like hundreds of emails on a daily basis. But you never know uh, when something might connect and you might, you know, actually uh, get a chance for an interview at the company. So uh, definitely. Uh, that is a point that you can keep in mind. And the last thing uh, that helps is referral. So I'm pretty sure uh, a lot of your friends might be working at different companies and you can just ask them if there is an opening available and uh, you can share your resume and you can ask them to refer you for that position. So personally speaking, what I have observed is that uh, referral is, uh, you know, generally when the employees internally share somebody's resume, you have a higher chance of getting selected because that person generally knows uh, the other person uh, whose resume they are sharing with the HR. So the HR has more confidence that, uh, you know, this candidate could be a suitable, uh, uh, it could be a suitable candidate for that position. So, yeah, and the last point that I would actually like to mention uh, while looking for jobs is that, you know, you need to be really sure uh, and read the job description very carefully before applying for jobs. I have seen people who just uh, randomly and blindly apply to jobs, like uh, with one year of experience, they apply to a job which clearly mentions that you need a minimum of five, ex five years of experience. So, uh, I mean, it is good to apply to a lot of jobs that you have more options in hand. But you also need to make sure that at least you are, uh, you know, uh, matching the eligibility criteria that is uh, mentioned on that job profile. So this was the first part of finding a job. 
uh, how to you know sort of uh, apply to the jobs now the second part is uh, what to do uh, when you have uh, gotten a call back and the hr is asking for your resume so a lot of people get stuck here because uh, they don't have a well made resume so here are a few things that i have noticed that works with every hr having a compact resume is really important uh, don't keep a 3 to 4 page long resume uh, it makes no sense uh, even people even i have seen that even people with uh, 10 years of experience don't keep such long resumes because it makes no sense um, so try to keep a one page pdf uh, so that it's easier for the hr to look at it as well the second point is that nobody likes a cluttered resume uh, don't just put everything on a one page because i've asked you to make a one page pdf uh, it is very important that you leave uh, some space uh, have proper alignment and margins and uh, organize the different sections in your resume properly so that it is easier for the hr to read everything as well like for example uh, when the hr is looking at your resume it should be clear that okay this is the section where it states the number of papers that you have cleared this shows your education background this shows your work experience so it is very important to lay out everything in your resume properly the third point is to segregate your work experience so this is obviously for experienced folks so uh, when you are applying to a new job uh, it is very important for the hr to be able to properly read the kind of work that you have done to make sure uh, whether you would be a good fit uh, uh, for the opening or not so you know try to instead of uh, writing down everything in one paragraph where it will be very difficult for the hr to pick on and see uh, or you know actually they could get lost uh, in the kind of work that you have done so for example you have worked uh, for three clients in your current role so just try to segregate your work experience project why say project 1 2 3 i mean i know you can you cannot state the name of the client but you can say anything like for example i'll show you in my resume i wrote a pnc insurer that i worked for and then just make bullet points like uh, you know three to four bullet points under that project and just highlight the main bits that you have done in that project and try to use one liners and not long paragraphs or long sentences uh, so that it is easier for the hr to understand the fourth point will be to only highlight the extra curriculars from your high school and beyond please don't mention that you uh, you know uh, you stood first position in class 5th in a badminton competition just uh, stick to class 11 12 or even better you know from college if you have a lot of experiences don't put too many extra curriculars in your resume definitely extra curriculars are important but if you have uh, even important things to put on the resume try to limit it to four or five bullet points at max the second last point would be uh, spend time upskilling yourself this is for freshers for exper for experienced people and for everybody so excel is that one tool that everybody needs no matter what domain you're working in and no matter how much you already know excel there is still a lot to know on excel so i think the most important thing and these two are the easiest of tools that you can actually learn excel and power bi so power bi is a new and upcoming tool since the past one one and a half years uh, that a lot of actuaries have been using because it is a great visualization tool so i think a lot of videos are available even uh, actuators sells a power bi course it is available on youtube as well and it is actually not tough it is very very similar to excel so please spend time upskilling yourself such uh, you know skills actually stand out on your resume and it attracts the recruiter uh, to you know uh, sort of give you a higher priority than somebody else and the last point uh, that i would like to say is that having a good number of papers is always a benefit uh, please don't think uh, please don't get you know distracted and occupy yourself in other things and uh, skip exam terms being consistent is very very important because not only will it help you qualify sooner but it will al also help you get a decent package like for freshers uh, uh, a number of companies uh, gives you your salary based on your past number of papers like they have a base salary plus increment per paper that you have cleared and trust me like at least for the initial set of papers the ct exams it is much easier uh, that you get done with them while you are in college because later on it actually gets tough while you're working and it's better to sort of appear for the papers uh, where you're actually specializing in so that it's easier to study for them while working 
So having a good number of papers is very, very important. Uh, now I'll just show you my resume as an example. Uh, you can also DM me later for it uh, if you want to know anything. So generally, you know, people uh, have a mindset that you need to have a black and white resume. So I sort of wanted to add a little pinkish shade in my resume so that it stands out a little bit. So, you know, you can give a little bit of a brief overview about the kind of work that you have done. If you are a fresher, you can mention uh, something that you have done in your college or you can mention about the number of papers that you have cleared or you can, you know, sort of mention uh, the kind of role that you're looking to get into. Mentioning your contact details are, uh, on top is very, very important. If you ha have a good LinkedIn profile where you constantly keep posting, uh, then you can definitely add your link to LinkedIn profile as well. Then, you know, you can see that everything on my resume is, uh, you know, organized very properly. Like you can see that this is my education section. These are the number of papers that I've cleared. Under my skills, uh, it is also important uh, to mention the other kind of skills that you have apart from the technical skills. Like for me, I feel that planning, leadership and communication are some skills that I possess. So I have placed them under one bullet point. Since I work in the pricing team, I feel that that is one of my skill. So I have listed that as well. Now, when you come to the extracurriculars, uh, you know, I have placed everything like volunteering that I have done, uh, any kind of event uh, that I have been a part of. So basically, like I have highlighted vice captain because it shows that uh, not only have I listed leadership as a skill, I have actually also portrayed it in real life. So also highlighting bits of uh, achievements on your resume can help you make you stand out. And then in terms of work experience, you will see that I have very clearly laid out the different kinds of projects that I have worked in. And then under those, I have made two to three bullet points where uh, in brief, you know, I have mentioned the kind of work that I have done. And for every bullet point, I have highlighted something that I think uh, will be eye catchy for the recruiter. Like I have done an indication study or I have worked on profitability or, uh, you know, I have showed that I don't just know Power BI. I have actually worked on a project where I developed a dashboard. So these things actually help the HR, uh, you know, decide quickly whether you would be a good uh, candidate for the opening or not. And, uh, you know, at the bottom, I just gave a single line where I have mentioned my interest apart from working and studying. So I think all of this really helps uh, and all of this I have put into one page. And on the top, I just felt like, you know, giving two keywords that would describe uh, me better uh, so that, you know, these are uh, very eye catchy. So this is how I laid out my resume. Uh, you can definitely get in touch with me on LinkedIn as well uh, if you want, you know, any help with your resume. Now I will get back to the PowerPoint and let's move to the next slide. The most important, how to crack interviews. Now you have learned how to apply to jobs. You know how to make a good resume. Uh, you even got a call for an interview, but now you don't know how to prepare for it. So, you know, as I mentioned, one thing, uh, you shouldn't lose out on a good opportunity because you were not prepared well. So make sure that you actually keep these things in mind before appearing for interviews. So the first and the most important point uh, for both fresher and experienced people is that knowing your basics is really, really important. Like for a fresher, it could be, uh, you know, what you have studied in past papers. Like, uh, for example, if you're applying to a life insurance role, they will be more inclined to ask you questions from uh, CM1 like uh, NPV or IRR, or they could ask you a situation-based question. If you're applying to a GI role, uh, it could, you know, be picked out from papers like CT3 and CS2, where uh, maybe they can ask you about a general insurance concept, or uh, they can ask you about time series, or they can ask you about a particular distribution, and they can ask you to give an example. So it is very important uh, that you thoroughly know your basics. Uh, what actually helps... Uh, me is that uh, since I applied to my first job, I have maintained a diary where I write down everything that I feel could be important in any of the interviews to come. So, for example, if I appeared for an interview in the past, I write down the kind of questions that they have asked me before so that the next time I'm appearing for an interview, I can just have a quick browse through uh, 
to you know know what was asked to me before and then uh, since i was applying to gi roles so you know i wrote down a few concepts from cs2 like you know basics of run off triangle the different methods that are there and um, then i just uh, briefly wrote about five to six distributions like normal distribution poisson distribution the difference example so that even if the uh, interviewer asks me i can state the difference between the uh, you know two distributions like uh, they will never ask you to uh, mostly they will never ask you to actually state formulas or something because uh, they are more interested in knowing whether your concepts are clear or not even for uh, experienced professionals uh, you know it is very important that your basics are clear like for example uh, when uh, i was appearing for my uh, second job uh, since i had been working in the property and casualty domain which is basically general insurance uh, i you know wrote down about the different kinds of insurance that are sold in the us like property motor and you know i just wrote down uh, two to three points uh, you know under each insurance so that even if the interviewer asks me i should know everything about that that type of insurance because i have been working with it uh, since the past 1.5 years now the second point is be very careful what you add to your resume because you will be asked thorough questions on it so you know there are a lot of people who sort of uh, you know think that it's okay to brag in your resume like uh, you have just done one class of python you have just printed hello world and you write on your resume that you are uh, that you know you are proficient with python so the, you never know there is a chance that the interviewer can actually ask you uh, to uh, help you out with the code or uh, you know they can ask you how to approach a particular problem statement by using python and then you will get stuck and the interviewer will know that you have lied on your resume and you don't know how to use python so that actually sets a very negative impression on your behalf so even if you don't know something that is perfectly fine just tell the interviewer uh, when you're asked that you will be open to learning that particular uh, language or uh, you know whatever it is uh, in your role uh, because uh, you are a quick learner or whatever just try to highlight your strengths but uh, do not lie on your resume and uh, this is not just for uh, coding languages but it can also be to uh, you know the uh, the kind of work that you have done like for example if there is uh, some kind of work that you did in your organization two and a half years ago for about just a month and you do not remember anything related to it but you still add it to your resume there's a high chance that the interviewer will ask you to sort of uh, you know explain the entire process that you have done and then you won't remember anything because you did not work that much on it and it was long ago so try to refrain from putting such things on your resume uh, actually list down the kind of work that you have done and you're confident in talking about uh, then the third point will be be sure to list an overview of the work you have done at your previous organization so like for example i showed you my resume i had worked on three clients so when i was applying for my second job uh, i made sure uh, you know i actually opened my diary i made a section called uh, work done at exceedance and i listed uh, all the kinds of work that i had done like you know client number 1 uh, so uh, under this uh, the interview there can be a couple of things that the interviewer asks you like for example how were you involved in the project uh, what was the hierarchy of people that were involved in the project what was the client's ask on that particular project uh, were there any kind of challenges that you faced what was your role particularly uh, in the work that was done so you know i listed i made sure to list everything like for client number one i listed uh what the ask of the client was how many people were working uh what i did uh what went wrong uh if there was any kind of challenge that i faced so it is very important to you know be prepared for everything that the interviewer could ask you uh, related to your work so uh before you know leaving your organization be sure to list an overview because even in the future it's going to help you uh, keep everything in check about the kind of work that you have previously done the fourth point is understanding the role is really important now you know suppose uh, just for the sake of it you applied to a role and you your resume got shortlisted and you have an interview but you have no idea uh, what uh, the role entails uh, what your work uh, is what the job profile is and when the interviewer asks you that you know uh, 
what is that one particular thing that interested you about this role or why did you apply to this role and you have no idea how to answer it because you never understood the jd properly so it is very important that you pick roles that match your job profile and you understand it properly and if you don't then uh, make sure to ask that question to the interviewer at the end when they ask you if you have any questions the fifth point is practicing hr questions so a lot of people uh, take this part very right lightly they you know focus too much on the technical side and when they have an hr round they end up getting stuck so it is very important to practice for questions like uh, why you left your old job or you know like i'll talk about my first job so my first round was technical and the second round was an hr round and at that time i was actually uh, not aware that an hr round can be conducted so soon and i was not prepared you know even uh, one minute before the interview i was just going through the technical uh, questions and uh, when my round started uh, there was not a single question related to the technical side so the interviewer just asked me questions like highlight your strengths highlight your weaknesses uh, and you know i was so confused because uh, i did not prepare anything and uh, i was just giving uh, random answers to all the questions so it is very important to you know so that you stand out from other candidates uh, that you prepare for this round uh, well in advance so uh, you know make a section for uh, hr questions then uh, list down what your strengths are what your weaknesses are don't give uh, very common uh, strengths and weaknesses uh, actually try to give something that uh, you have seen uh, that you have actually uh, applied to in the real life and uh, for the weakness bit it is very important that you be true true to the interviewer but don't give a negative quality uh, that you know could uh, impact on the role that you are applying for whenever you are stating for a weakness be sure that you you know list down a quality that you are telling the interviewer that you have this particular weakness but you are working on it in this and this way and or you have already worked on it on this and this way anything like that uh, it could be the question could be time when you faced a challenge principles you live by so there are a couple of hr questions that are available on youtube you can just have a look at those you can you know write those questions so that you can up, uh, prepare for uh, those well in advance before any interview that you have and it will actually help you a lot in uh, setting you aside uh, from other candidates the next point which i feel is the most important of all is confidence is the key you know even if you are giving an incorrect answer if you are actually you know confident about it uh, it could actually help uh, it could show the interviewer that uh, at least you are confident in saying uh, what you want to convey to the interviewer like if you are so confused that oh i don't know um, i'm not too sure uh i mean it is okay to you know accept if you don't know an answer but uh, being confident is very very important i think one of the most important uh, sub categories of confidence is that uh, i believe that you should dress well uh, when you are appearing for an interview don't even if you're having a virtual interview don't uh, sit in your uh, night dress or uh, you know casuals uh, i think it is important that you dress well top to bottom uh, even though only uh, the top is visible uh, wear a good shirt wear a good blazer dress well because it will give you the confidence while you are talking to the interviewer sit upright uh, make use of your hand while talking uh, so that uh, you know it will give you the confidence talk slowly generally what happens is that we get so nervous that you know uh, we start talking so fast that uh, neither do you get time to sort of slow down and think about what you have to talk ne next but uh, the interviewer also doesn't understand what you're talking about so talking slowly as well is very very important uh, if the interviewer has asked you a question and you think that uh, you are getting stuck or you don't know the answer to that question then ask for a minute uh, tell them that is it okay if i take some time to think or uh, you know if it is a numerical based question or a puzzle question then tell them that is it okay if i take a pen and paper or just tell them that uh, you know uh, i need a minute to think and uh, can i get a glass of water and they'll actually appreciate it and give you that time and uh, it'll help you calm down as well and it'll help you think what you actually need to talk about so this is a really really important point that has actually helped me clear my interviews when i was applying for my second job 
the next point is avoid having a negative attitude like uh, you know when people are applying for the second job uh, generally uh, and almost always the interviewer will ask you uh, that what is the reason that you uh, left your old job or you know how were the people or something like that so really avoid having a negative attitude towards the previous organization or the people that you have worked with because having a strong work ethic is really really important uh, you know when uh, hr questions are asked to a candidate the interviewer is making sure whether the candidate is a good uh, fit culturally in their organization or not. So if you know you will make negative comments uh, about people that you have worked with for so long, uh, it will not leave a good impression on the interviewer because they will think that uh, when you leave their uh, company as well, you, this is how you're going to talk about uh, the job. So you know, try to sort of modify your statements in a good way when you have to talk about your previous organization and uh, last point is research about the company don't just go into the interview knowing nothing about the company or the role that you have applied for uh, because otherwise uh, you know you are uh, you are at the same level as everybody else so if you want to stand out in a interview where you know uh, hundreds of other candidates are applying you need to stand out and researching or knowing things about the company can actually help a lot now there is one particular thing that actually helped me uh, so like actuators educational institute has a you know website called uh, aei forums uh, where basically um, Praveen sir has collected a lot of questions from different students, you know, that can help you prepare for interviews. So it is segregated according to uh, the domain that you might be applying for, like life insurance or general insurance or pensions, HR based question or, you know, case studies. So you can uh, just go through and uh, to, you know, be uh, confident with your basics so when i was uh, applying for my job as well you know i just opened that site uh, i went to my domain i read up the things that i thought could help me for my interview and you know it actually uh, really helped me a lot um uh yeah i think that is about it for cracking interviews if you have any questions like definitely we can take it up at the end of the session uh the next slide is i think where everybody is you know uh very excited that uh, how much salary will be offered, uh, what is the industry average uh, in general, you know, how much is being offered. So salary is generally not disclosed by anyone at any level, like, uh, you know, they are prohibited from talking about the salary. So if I talk about freshers, uh, the best thing you can do is, you know, get an idea, get a range by talking to someone in the company that you have applied for. Like uh, if, you know, you have interviewed at company X, just, you know, connect with some someone on LinkedIn, ask them that, uh, you know, what are the salary that they are giving to freshers? Like if they can give you a range, uh, if, you know, not even a particular number, they can uh, definitely give you a range. So when the HR asks you, at least you have some kind of number in mind that you can quote. Then there are also sites uh, online like Glassdoor uh, that gives you an estimate of the salary that are offered by different companies across different roles. So, you know, that will give you an idea of uh, what, uh, how much amount you can ask to the recruiter. For experienced folks, your, your expected CTC largely depends on your current CTC. So, you know, uh, the thing that works, uh, like when I was also applying for my second job, uh, I, you know, tried to get an idea of the industry average for someone with this many number of papers and 1.5 years of experience. And when I got, you know, a ballpark that, okay, this is the number. So I tried to quote something around that number. Uh, it also depends, uh, you know, hugely on the demand for actuaries at that time. Like, uh, we all know that for uh, IFRS uh, implementation, there was huge demand for actuaries a couple of months back. So, you know, companies are hiring extensively. So uh, whenever, you know, there is a lot of demand and companies uh, are actually looking for a number of employees, you can actually aim to ask for a greater hike. Otherwise, a 30 to 40 percent hike is standard. And, uh, you know, you can easily ask for that kind of hike when you are making a switch. And even after that, if you're confused, uh, 
to you know how to answer that kind of question that what is your expected ctc you can always throw the ball uh, in the you know hr sport you can just ask them to provide a salary range you know you have to be very subtle about it like you can uh, tell them that uh, you know sort of it would be great if you can uh, state a range for this particular role so that i can tell you where i'm lying on that range and uh, there is a good chance that the hr won't reply but uh, it could they could reply because uh, they have replied to me in the past so it could happen and the last point for this is that uh, getting a good salary also highly depends on your negotiation skills with the hr so yeah try to be confident in what you're asking and try to prove your worth uh, that you know that i am actually worth that i'm asking for this salary and um, i think every sh thing should be well after that uh the last thing will be how to balance work and studies so this is one thing that a couple of people struggle with that you know now i started working and i don't know how to appear for my exams i think it's best that i skip this term because i didn't get time to you know sort of prepare for the exam so uh i'll just give you a few tips that has worked for me in the past and i hope it works for me in the future so point number 1 is setting achievable targets so you know don't uh, just make a plan saying that i'll study for 6 hours while working you know it is not realistically possible so instead uh, it is better that you you know um set aside some time that you say that daily i'm going to you know study for this amount of time or i'm going to complete this much content uh, basically just set targets that you think uh, you can achieve then point number 2 is starting early on always helps so there is approximately a 6 month gap between exams for all the societies so you know decide the exam you're planning to take early on um, you know don't waste time like uh, you have given your exam in september and you're waiting until december that when uh, you know the results will come after that i will uh, start preparing so you know after that we don't have a lot of time left and uh, since the exam is in april itself you approximately get 3 3 and a half months of preparation time so it is better that you you know plan early decide the exam and then you can uh, get a good 5 months of preparation time and uh, it'll actually help you because you don't have to spend a lot of time on a daily basis while working like you can spend 2 hours uh one hour uh during the initial few days and then uh, you know you can maximize on the weekends which is actually my next point so uh i know how frustrating it can get uh when you're working monday to friday and then saturday sunday are the only two days that you get to you know go out meet your friends actually party or spend time with family and uh, at that point of time you know your teacher is telling you that uh, weekend aa gaya hai padhai karo but uh, you know those are actually the two days uh, where you need to maximize the most um, because uh, from monday to friday we are not getting that much time to study so initially uh, you know in the first month uh, it is still fine where you can take it lightly uh, and you you know don't have to uh, study for a very long duration but gradually as your exam is coming close uh, you know you have about 3 months left it is very important that you balance everything really properly like even for me if i'm studying on the weekends i'm also partying on the weekends i'm also going out and meeting my friends on weekends i'm also sleeping and watching movies so you know you need to plan everything really properly that uh, since i'm getting week weekends uh, you know i'll at least target to study 6 hours uh, this is something that uh, you know requires more concentration and more time so i will uh, sort of keep this aside to study on saturday and sunday and then uh, you know apart uh, from the 6 hours that you have set aside you can easily spend that time relaxing or doing whatever you want and uh, you know you will be good to go uh the next point is being consistent is very very important like personally for me uh instead of setting time aside you know i like to set aside that uh this is the number of pages that i'm going to read today no matter what happens no matter how much time it takes like uh, if i'm uh, if i get it done within an hour then great uh, i am going to study more uh, if it's going to take a longer period of time then i need to sit for that time given that it's possible uh, and uh, i am going to complete the content that i have set aside for today so uh, being consistent on a daily basis is very very important uh, 
I always feel that quality study is much more than quantity study. Like, uh, you know, setting aside six hours uh, time to study and then using your phone for four and a half hours versus studying properly with 100% concentration for two hours, I'm going to choose two hours and I'm going to go and sleep for the rest four hours. So, you know, set your phone aside, put it on DND mode, put it on focus mode and go give full concentration while studying. Uh, you know, uh, take a corner where nobody is going to disturb you keep water with you, keep uh, something to munch on and, uh, you know, give your 100% uh, when you're studying. So not only will it help you complete your course faster, but uh, it will actually increase your uh, productivity a lot. And you will see that you're being able to remember the concepts much more easily as compared to uh, when you were not studying with concentration. Okay, so the next point is don't take a gap unless absolutely necessary like uh, if there is something serious uh, mental health or anything else uh, i would not recommend missing a term i have actually made that mistake once or twice uh, in the past and uh, i would absolutely not recommend you to do that because uh, once you break uh, in between you know once you break the flow it is very difficult to get back to it once again especially when you're working uh, when you're working and you sort of you know miss a term uh, uh, after that, it is uh, very, very difficult to open the books and, uh, you know, study once again because you have been out of touch since so many months now. So it is very important that you start your preparation early on and uh, at least attempt the exam uh, every term so, so that uh, you are in that, uh, you know, mode uh, and in that flow. Uh, the next point is to plan your study leaves properly. So, you know, I think almost all the organizations, this is one benefit of actually uh, working in the actuarial domain is that for every exam, you have a set number of leaves that the organization gives you. So it is very important to plan your study leaves well in advance, like, you know, try taking a study leave uh, uh you know in the middle of the week like uh i have seen a lot of people take their leaves on friday and uh then they usually relax on friday and they just study on saturday and they again relax on sunday so it's kind of better that you you know plan your study leave in the middle of the week like uh, sort of maybe wednesdays uh so that you can study and then again you have a break uh thursday and friday where you're working and then saturday sunday again you get two days to study and generally for me, uh, you know, I find it better to break my study leaves into two half days each because I know if I take an entire day of study leave, I will not be studying for eight hours. I'll be studying for, you know, half that amount of time and I'll be wasting uh, the other day. So I prefer to take uh, two half days in a week when I'm getting my study leaves so that I can maximize it properly. And the last thing, um, I don't know how many people believe in manifestation, but I think personally for me, it has uh, worked very well in the past. Uh, you know, I get those postcards uh, that are available on Amazon and uh, I just write a postcard to myself from the future saying that, you know, dear Akshita, you have cleared this exam on this date. Uh, and your current exam count is this, 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 uh, you know, you really got to believe in it uh, uh, if you like manifestation or even if you want to get started on it. Uh, I think uh, reiterating and affirming something uh, really helps alongside preparing. So, yeah, I think um, that was all. And I would love if you have any questions for me. Um, thank you. So much. Thank you so much. It was uh, I was totally listening for the whole of 50 minutes and ppt which you have uh, made is absolutely amazing okay. okay so i guess everyone here is benefited so now we'll open the house for questions so yes uh, there are a few questions akshita in the chat box if you can take that okay uh are we asked about the company we are giving an interview to like companies competition softwares they use etc no i don't think like i have never faced this uh personally uh like um i am audible right yes you are audible ah, so basically uh they could you know probably ask you what the company does uh but uh, they'll not really ask you what uh, about anything about the company's competition or the softwares they use I mean, maybe you can ask them about the role, uh, like suppose if you have applied to a company, you can ask them uh, what are the kind of softwares that I can expect to use or what are the kind of softwares that I can get exposure to. 
but uh, they will not ask you about this question. Uh, hope uh, I answered your question, Ansh. How did you decide to have a passion for general insurance? Were you certain that you wanted to work in GI or did you first obtain experience in life and general before deciding? Okay, so uh, this actually, I think, just worked out from me, for me in a way that I landed in general insurance. Like, uh, so all my interviews uh, initially, like before my first job, all the interviews that I appeared for uh, were for life insurance. And uh, one day, you know, I just got a call from someone uh, who wanted to interview me for a property and casualty based role. Uh, like they were hiring interns and that is the first time i'd even heard of the word property and casualty insurance so this is basically just uh, general insurance they call it property and casualty insurance in the us and uh, you know when uh, i cleared that interview uh, i have already shared my past interview experience that i never got any job or anything because of my level of confidence so when i got that internship i just immediately said yes to it and that is how i got introduced to GA. And uh, when, uh, you know, uh, like in my two and a half months of internship, I learned so much about property and casualty and, you know, uh, the uh, innumerable things that we can do in the general insurance domain that I never really wanted to switch or even try out life insurance or pensions. So I think what you can do is, uh, you know, uh, sort of I think one thing that helps is you can determine whether you have a more interest uh, uh, an inclination towards a CD5 paper versus a CS2 paper because CS2 is like a general insurance and CD uh, like CM1 is life insurance. So uh, that is one thing that can help you. And apart from that, I think you just got to trust the process and just go for it if you uh, if you're unsure about which domain you should go into. After working for a couple of months, you will understand whether uh, that uh, that is where your interest aligns or not. And it is completely fine. Even if your interest doesn't align, you can easily make a switch uh, and it will be completely OK. I hope that I answered your question. Oh, hi, Akshita. Am I audible? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, first of all, you presented very well. And thank you so much for covering each and every doubt so extensively. Thank and uh, I really loved it, like the presentation and stuff. So basically, I have this one doubt. So like you mentioned that uh, we can, you know, approach HR on LinkedIn for job prospects. So basically, whenever we type HR for a specific company, so then the search results comes like, you know, 15 to 20 HRs who are currently working in PwC, for example. So how to segregate or how to like make sure that whom to approach, like which HR to approach for that particular, you know, job posting and all. Um, I think you can reach out to the first two HRs that you see and even if they are, uh, you know, not hiring for actuarial and, uh, you know, if you're lucky and they reply to your message, I'm pretty sure that they would be willing to give you the contact of the particular HR who is hiring for uh, the actuarial domain. Like uh, in particular, if I talk about PwC, you know, I've been trying to get in since 2020. Like uh, I just kept on texting, but I never really got a reply. But I still didn't give up uh, and I, you know, emailed to the HR as soon as I found her uh, contact. So uh, I think you can just pick out the first result that you see and you can ask them whether they are, whether they have any actual opening or not. And uh, that should be good. Okay, uh, thanks a lot. No problem. Uh, okay, I think the next question is, uh, can a fresher start its career in GI domain or need any past experience? So even I sort of, uh, so there's one thing that I would like to mention, uh, you know, if you are in your college currently, uh, you should definitely aim to get an internship in any of the domains. It will also help you decide early on whether you're interested in that domain or not. And it will also give you an experience and insight sort of uh, into the role that you will be working in the future. But in particularly, uh, if I want to say uh, you don't need to have any experience for your first job, like even I started uh, like in my internship, I did not really do a lot of work. Like I was just introduced to property and casualty insurance. So I was entering as a fresher only. So you can enter into any domain without any past experience. Uh, what are the scope in non-traditional role of actuary? Uh, I will actually not be able to answer this question. Uh, if Praveen Baya wants to take this up, he can. But uh, I am actually more aware about uh, general insurance, about the industry that I am working in. So 
uh, in the non traditional sector in finance and investment you can try uh, approaching the banks uh, like hedge funds investment banking firms trading firms okay so all these fields you can try for and we are recently trying to put in a blog also on this and how to approach so we'll try keeping a session with one more investment expert for you all to uh, basically understand the field better okay uh the next is how can i get an actuarial internship uh so basically like the way i said that you need to you know look for jobs in similar ways you can look for internships as well like i think in the past one one and a half year a lot of companies have been hiring interns who are still in their college and pursuing a graduation so you can just keep looking for you know you can use the hashtag like actuarial internship or uh, you know something like that you can again ask for people uh, you know your friends or your uh, contacts who are working in different companies you can ask them if there is an opening for uh, for an actuarial internship for someone who is still in their college or for someone who has graduated so that you can get a get a better insight so yeah i think the similar thing for job will work for an internship as well uh what conceptual or basic questions can interviewer ask for the role of analyst role in retirement and pension uh so i am not sure about retirement and pension uh, you know as i mentioned i am from the gi industry totally but uh on the ai uh, on you know actuators uh, website there is a section called uh, retirement and pension if i'm not wrong and you can definitely have a look under that section if there is anything available or uh, you can again connect with people on linkedin who are working in retirement and pensions domain and uh, anybody would be happy to help you out uh, if they you know see your message just ask them that uh, what is the kind of question that i can expect as a fresher uh, entering in this industry uh, because you know in particular we have not studied anything in our papers so just ask them uh, what are the questions that uh, can be asked and uh, they will help you out definitely and uh, even the interviewer knows that since you don't have any past experience they will not ask you anything work related but uh, very very basic questions that uh, you can actually reach out to someone who is working in that industry i hope i have answered your question rithik uh dhruvika as a final year graduate how do we search for openings as most openings that we get to see are catered to graduates uh so are you talking about an internship or uh, that you would get in your third year or uh, are you talking about a job that you could get post graduation um thruvika i am not sure but uh if you're talking about an internship uh okay you're talking about job so you know uh like i'm pretty sure that all of you know that uh, you cannot uh, sit uh, you know you cannot be hired for a job before you have completed your graduation but generally a lot of companies uh, do start hiring for roles uh, around january so uh, i think that uh, the first option could be campus placement uh, if uh, you know your camp uh, your college is actually offering uh, that opportunity for actuarials uh, you know be interviewed by companies and if that option is not available uh, the only thing you can do is not give up and just uh, keep searching for a lot of companies because uh, even though there are a lot of jobs uh, that uh, you know cater to graduates uh, there are quite a few that i have noticed which are hiring uh, for people who are still uh, in their college like uh, example willistas watson you know hires well in advance like around january they hire for people who will be joining their team in june july so there are a lot of companies like that who hire early on uh, for people provided that they complete their graduation they are going to hire you even swiss re if i'm not wrong it uh, you know interviews early on and uh, offers you a position uh, uh subject to the fact that you are going to you know complete your graduation so just keep searching on linkedin and you will find a lot of openings so akshita have you done any courses in excel or power bi or you you know learned everything while working on the job so excel uh, i have you know done a couple of videos like even from praveen sir and even from youtube also you will find that a lot of courses are available and for power bi i actually did not know about that course until i started working 
and uh, there was actually a client requirement uh, so i learned power bi uh, within two days like i just uh, watched a lot of uh, videos on youtube and it is fairly simple like it is uh, as i mentioned it is very very similar to excel and uh, the key uh, you know i think uh, learning from any coding language will be that you need to practice a lot on it uh, like if you like even talking about a power bi if you just look at the videos and do nothing you will not be able to work on it uh, when you're given a project so just take a you know handy set of data and just uh, import it onto power bi and start working on it and it will actually help you you know be more hands on for that particular software thank you so much ashita since uh, due to shortage of time we will end the session here and uh, yes thank you very much it was indeed a very insightful session and we'll plan to do more such sessions okay yeah. thank you so much thank you so thank much thank you thank you thank you everyone